It's a paradox. Why is it that we have no motivation to do the things that matter, and yet infinite motivation to do the things that don't? Like eating random junk in your house, or staying up all night messaging your favorite OnlyFans creator. We flip-flop between these two extreme states, right? And though they seem very different, they're actually symptoms of the same problem, a broken brain. There's a famous experiment with genetically altered mice unable to produce dopamine in their brains. If you put cheese in their mouth, go eat it, but move the cheese even just a few inches away, and they stop caring to the point where they starve to death. Do you see the parallels here? This figure of cheese is all around us, but add just a tiny bit of friction and hard work, and and bam, you sort of stop caring too. But don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to rewire your brain permanently. This video is going to be a master class on motivation and may just very well be the most important thing you ever watch. First off, everyone thinks that dopamine is a chemical for pleasure, but it's actually the chemical for motivation. It's a pretty old chemical, rooted in billions of years of evolution, meant to push us to seek things necessary for survival. When you get those things, the reward centers in your brain light up like crazy. Speaking of which, have you ever wondered why some people love rough sex, like painful BDSM Fifty Shades of Grey style? It starts to make sense when you realize pain and pleasure actually activate the same parts of the brain. Dr. Anna Lemke, Stanford addiction psychiatrist, describes it as a brain seesaw, with pain on one side and pleasure on the other. The moment the seesaw tips in one direction, the brain works hard to restore balance. It's why after after drinking too much alcohol, you get a hangover the next day. This is the concept of homeostasis, one of the most important physiological drives for all living things. There's a homeostatic set point for everything temperature, pH, blood sugar, even pleasure. Evolutionarily, it all makes sense. This pain pleasure seesaw was built for the world our ancestors lived in, it made the brain the ultimate motivation machine. The moment we got pleasure, the brain seesaws the pain, and the pleasure is immediately gone gone. In a world where everything is scarce, never being satisfied was how you found the motivation to go out on another 8 hour hunt. Because that's what you had to do to ensure survival. The system was built so that motivation would never be a problem. I think of pleasure as these gold stars floating out there in the world, right? In the ancient world, these gold stars were never freely accessible. They were always locked behind what I call an effort paywall. Your brain was always expected to do some upfront work for it. A little bit of Pain, a little bit of pain for a little bit. A little bit of pain for a little bit of pleasure. Natural homeostatic balance. In fact, your foot was always on the pain pedal portion of the seesaw. Constant hunger, constant fatigue, constant danger. But in today's world, it's complete opposite. These effort paywalls are completely gone. Gold stars are freely accessible 24-7. Food, sex, drugs, you can buy whatever the crap you want. Like this thing. Our ancestors would have had to sack an entire village to get their hands on one of these puppies. Free gold stars sound great in theory, but pleasure is actually never free. If you didn't pay for it up front with the effort paywall, you pay for it on the back end. And that's why even though we no longer feel the pain of scarcity our ancestors felt, the pain we now feel is uniquely a modern one. The pain of perpetual withdrawal, and in my opinion, is 10 times worse. Because living in a state of constant withdrawal leads to what I call a dopamine prison, a negative feedback cycle that kills all motivation. In a dopamine prison, you're in a state of constant unease, always craving, always wanting. You can't even sit still with 5 minutes of boredom. You feel like crap because you're starting at negative 10. To feel normal, you rev the pleasure pedal, collect a bunch of free gold stars just to crawl back to a state of normal. But normal never lasts. Even worse, most times you overshoot because you rev the pleasure pedal too forcefully and tip the seesaw even harder towards pain. The next day, you wake up at negative 20 and repeat the cycle only now with more desperation. Biochemically, it makes sense. Dopamine are these tiny little neurochemical molecules. They're floating in between your brain cells, but they only work if your brain cells have docking stations. When you flood your brain with too much, the brain's like, whoa, and destroys the docking stations to get back to homeostasis. A dopamine prison traps you in this low dopamine state. It's a trap because the only gold stars you can afford are the low hanging ones. 
ones. The same ones that got you in this mess in the first place. The gold stars you actually care about. An amazing life, dating your neighbor's ex-wife, six-pack abs, platinum stars. These are all locked behind massive effort paywalls, which for you have become virtually impossible to pay for. You can't do things that require effort because you're now the rat with no dopamine. You have zero motivation for hard stuff. You can barely get the cheese that's right in front of you. Good news is that there's a clear way to fix this problem because when you don't even have the motivation to do simple things, there's no way you're going to be able to do more important stuff. Like the other day, my grandpa was in the hospital dying. I don't even remember what his last words were to me. It was either Sonny, you're an idiot, or I love you. But with Plod Note Pro, no important conversation has to ever go missing again. They've developed a note-taking device the size of two credit cards, a genuine game changer for note-taking. Doesn't matter if you're in a meeting, a video call, or on the phone, Plod Note Pro locks right onto the speaker with crystal clear audio. The entire transcript is automatically divided into chapter markers I used to jump to the exact section I want, or just go to the notes tab to get an overview summary, which includes key topics and action items. For a more visual layout, I jump to their mind map or go to a to-do list to see what each person's next steps are. And this is just one template of thousands. You got stuff for lectures, interviews, sales calls, project meetings, and even for meetings with your lawyer when Bob sues you for wooing his ex-wife. My favorite part is actually the ask plot feature. You can search anything across your audio files to surface key points or forgotten moments. It also helps draft emails. Dear Bob, your wife obviously does not love you anymore. Please go away. Anyway, get your own with the link in the description. Enjoy the exclusive offer with my code SPOON and never forget anything ever again. Okay, let's talk about how to get out of a dopamine prison. And then in the second phase, we'll talk about how to permanently stay out of it. First step is realizing this is not a willpower issue or a personality issue. It's a brain issue, full stop. Stop tying stuff like self-worth to this and feeling shitty when you fall back to old habits. Your brain is simply low on dopamine docking stations. Step two, get crystal clear on why you want to fix your brain. 95% of humans are trapped in some form of compulsive overconsumption. Everyone has their drug of choice. For Bob, it's infinite scrolling. For Joe, it's dating his neighbor's ex-wives. Most people just live with a bunch of extra pain gremlins on their homeostatic seesaw and accept their low dopamine baseline. Why do you need your motivation to be at 100%? Is it because your life sucks? This matters a lot because what you're about to do is going to suck even more. And it's why 95% of people never get past it. I call it the dip of irrationality. The dip of irrationality is going to be harder than anything you've ever experienced before. More difficult than Norwegian yodeling and definitely more difficult than learning how to be a part-time stripper at your local nursing home. During the dip, you're doing a hard factor reset of your home homeostatic set point and shooing off all those pain gremlins. If you don't have a strong why, you always default to the rational thing, which is to choose pleasure. If you're Mario and a free gold star is just sitting right there, you'd be an idiot not to get it. Billions of years of evolution are pushing for you to pick up this gold star. Only purpose allows you to override this most primitive instinct and become irrational, to ignore it, to choose pain instead, to always choose pain in a sea of pleasure. And that's why, according to science, step three is crucial. The 30-day dopamine fast. This isn't the dumb kind of dopamine detox where you hide in a dark room, stop talking to people, and stare at a blank wall. This is a targeted fast for your specific drug of choice. Brain MRIs show that it takes around 30 days for these dopamine docking stations to come back online. But that's not the only thing that's changing these 30 days. If the reward centers are the brain's accelerators, the prefrontal cortex is the brake. That's the voice in your head that tells you, whoa, be smart about this. Bob is your friend. His ex-wife should be off limits. For most people, that voice just stays a voice. The brake isn't really connected to the accelerator. So even when you know something's a bad idea, you still do it. This connection is weak the same way your legs are weak when you skip leg day. But even worse than skipping leg day is always skipping brain day. That's what this 30 day fast really is, 30 brain days in a row. Every time you notice a craving but refuse to cave, that's a rep for your prefrontal cortex. Do that for 30 days straight and you'll feel it, the circuitry tightening, the break finally hooking up. That's how you strengthen the muscle of self-control. Step four now, the Odyssean contract. 
This is when your past self protects your present self from doing something your future self is going to regret. It's based off of the Greek myth where anyone who's heard the siren song goes crazy and kills themselves. This one dude is like, well, I kind of still want to hear the song. So what does he do? He gets tied to the ship's mast and orders the men to keep him there no matter what. When the song starts, of course he changes his mind. Is all like, ah, just kidding, man, untie me. He's kicking and screaming, but it doesn't matter. He made a contract. Your siren song is going to last for 30 days. And unless you find a mask to tie yourself to as well, you're not going to make it when those pain gremlins become too much to bear. According to the science of self-control, an impulse always starts with an environmental trigger. For me, that's waking up next to my phone. Research shows the best strategy is to kill the impulse before it even begins. But the don't sleep next to your phone tactic isn't enough. You still associate the phone with a dopamine hit every time you see it. The real move is to make an Odyssean contract and remove the dopamine hit completely. Here's mine. I use an app called Block every morning at 6 a.m. It locks all my addicting apps. The only way to unlock them is to tap a physical key I keep in my car. During crunch time, I hand that key to my roommate or Bob's ex-wife and tell them not to give it back to me until I finish my essay on the dark history of Norwegian yodeling. There's even a super focus mode with one tap, the entire phone is locked, except for the one or two apps that keep me productive. But be careful, finishing 30 days doesn't mean it's over. You still have to stay vigilant. Relapse is always lurking. Dopamine prisons leave what Dr. Anna Lamke calls a permanent latent echo. In one study, rats were injected with cocaine for seven days straight. Each day, they got wilder, scrambling around in their cages in a coked out frenzy. The scientists then waited in entire year before giving them one more hit. Instantly, they were back in full addiction mode. No ramp up. Just one taste and the old circuitry reactivated. That's how addiction works. Once your brain's been there, it remembers the path back. This is why the homeostatic seesaw is key. Balance isn't something you achieve once, it's something you maintain. I used to think life was all about maximizing pleasure and minimizing pain. But the real goal is actually balance and equilibrium. Effort to reward, pain to pleasure. That's how you keep motivation high and stay out of a dopamine prison. I've codified this system into four levels of difficulty. Level one is knowing your triggers. Halt bro is an easy acronym for the emotional states that trigger bad habits. Hunger, anger, loneliness, tiredness, and boredom. Whenever I hit any of these, I go on high alert. For example, if I'm tired or bored and tempted to scroll, I use Block's timer mode. Once activated, even my key card can't unlock it. I can't even delete the app to unlock it either checkmate. If your vice isn't digital, the same rule applies. When you sense one of these emotional states, remove yourself from any place your vice is easily accessible. Level 2. No more free gold stars period. This is the difference between simple and complex dopamine. Simple dopamine is like junk food, instant, cheap, and ultimately destructive. Just as too much sugar wrecks insulin sensitivity, too much free pleasure wrecks dopamine sensitivity. Complex dopamine, on the other hand, is pleasure with a price tag, earned and paid for up front. This is why I only play Clash Royale while holding a plank, but it doesn't always have to happen at the same time. This is what I call the effort paywall of life. Think of each day like a carnival game. You earn raffle tickets for effort, cleaning the toilet, a deep work session, 50 push-ups, and then you redeem them for pleasures, phone time, ice cream, new shoes, a Europe trip with hot babes. The fundamental rule still applies. No pleasure without upfront payment. When you lock your rewards behind effort, not only do you balance your dopamine seesaw, research shows you end up actually enjoying it more. They call this the IKEA effect. IKEA, for those that don't know, is a furniture store that's famous for getting you to build the stuff you buy. It's actually genius because the effort you put into building the product actually makes you value it more, 63% more to be exact, as in you be willing to pay 63% more for a chair you built, despite the fact that your chair is probably objectively crappier in every way possible. But that's how our brain works. Effort literally creates pleasure. I've noticed this in my life too. When I cook, even if it's terrible, the effort I put into making it is like the secret magic sauce that makes it more tasty. But just for me though, everyone else still thinks it tastes like crap. 
They found the same thing in rats too. Rats who had to work harder for sugar water actually enjoyed it more. How did they know? Uh, hey, Mr. Rat, what do you think? Two squeaks for yay and one squeak for nay? <laughs> They actually looked at their licking patterns. The rats that had to press a lever 50 times to get the reward licked more aggressively, much more eagerly, compared to those who only had to press it 10 times. The easy group licked half-heartedly. It was like, eh, whatever, been there, done that. Isn't that what it feels like to scroll these days? When your phone's always in your pocket, it's whatever. But when you only let yourself scroll after a long day of focused work, when you earned it, it magically feels rewarding again. Third level now. It's what I call the secret mythical invisible gym technique. Imagine a mythical gym that works out for you. You don't have to even go there, lift weights, or even move. Just knowing about it makes you stronger. And it's free. Who wouldn't sign up for that? But that's exactly what a craving is. Every time you feel one and don't cave, your prefrontal cortex gets stronger. Each minute you resist is another rep. Each craving you defeat removes a few pain gremlins from your seesaw. And the best part? You're not supposed to do anything for it to work. That's the secret gym's mantra. Do literally nothing. And in 15 minutes, most cravings fade away and the workout is done. That's all it takes. No effort, no energy, just awareness. Every time you write it out, your brain gets another massive upgrade. If you want to reach the fourth level, you don't wait for cravings to come to you. You hunt pain down yourself. This is what I call the 10 hits of pain rule. Doesn't matter what it is, cold showers, 25 push-ups, 10 burpees, showing up when you don't feel like it. Each rep is a hit for your mind. Why would anyone willingly choose pain? They'll scoff and call you a masochist, but all it means is that they don't understand how the brain works. They don't understand pain is the secret key to pleasure. Pain and pleasure activate the same part of the brain after all. Choose pain actively and the brain chooses pleasure passively. This is the opposite of a dopamine prison. It's creating what I call a dopamine sanctuary, a state of passive pleasure given freely throughout the day, the complete opposite of withdrawal. And it feels freaking awesome. 95% of people will never experience this. They'll live trapped in a low energy haze of cheap dopamine. But the elite few who master this, they can never go back. Getting there won't be easy, but you don't have to do it alone. That's why I created Level 100, a science-based self-development community built for people serious about becoming their best selves. Inside, we deep dive every week into mental toughness, resilience, habit design, focus, learning how to learn, and much more, all distilled into practical, actionable steps. The next launch is limited to just a few spots. If you're ready to stop fighting your brain and start upgrading it, join the waitlist. I'll see you there.